Welcome to the screencast tutorial on InnerSafe. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how the value mapping tool works in InnerSafe 4.1. This is a new feature that we've added, which allows you to define complex relationships between population data in your data set and um, the meanings of those data. So for example, we'd use value mappings to select columns in your attribute table which represent children below five years old, children below 13 years old and above five years old, and sort of put them into different um, demographic groups. And you can also do it with vulnerable sectors like pregnant females, disabled people and so on. So the goal is to make a, a much more detailed breakdown of the demographics of the people that have been displaced um, by a disaster. This is a technical discussion, so it's not meant for first-time InnerSafe users, but rather for advanced users. And um, so we'll assume that you already understand the basic workings of InnerSafe and defining metadata and so on. We're going to focus very much on the specific activity of creating the keywords for, for these demographic groupings. In the first part, I'm going to show just doing the keywords as a user in the user interface. And the second part is even more advanced. It's going to be showing how these keywords are actually defined in the definitions files so that you could potentially add new keywords to definitions if you need to and then submit them back to the project for um, other people to use as well. So what I have in front of me here on the computer is uh, QGIS Open with uh, Jakarta dataset and I've got this census data and what's interesting about the census data is that rather than just providing raw count of people per per census area or per uh, village area that they've got here they've actually given a detailed breakdown and and the breakdown is um, by age classes and by fe female and male so you can see for example um, this field here is coded as um, um, uh, female between the age of zero and four and then on the next column we've got female um, between the age of um, just going to zoom in here females between the age of five and six and then females between ages seven and nine and so on and so on and if we scroll across you'll see then they have males between the age of zero and four males between different age groups and so on and then if we keep on scrolling we'll see that they also have other um, uh, demographic information like um, the number of divorced people, the number of people with vision impairments, problems working, uh, walking that need personal care and so on and so on, and employment rates and so on and so on. So we're going to use these data to um, sort of inform the reporting process of InnerSafe and um, we do that by using this new tool which you'll see on the toolbar here which is called the, the field mapping tool. The field mapping tool is also available as part of the keywords editor. And um, you cannot use the field mapping tool, the standalone one, unless you already have exposure population keys, keywords for a vector layer or for a vector aggregation layer. So we're gonna use it by doing the keywords editor, but just bear in mind at the moment that we do have this extra icon which lets you jump straight into the tool. Um, we may remove it in the future if we decide that it's um, not useful having it as a separate tool. So for now we're going to dive in using the keywords creation wizard. And uh, we're going to go through the normal process of, of defining the keywords for this exposure layer. We're going to indicate that it's population data and that it's continuous data uh, and that it contains population counts. Now, something that's different from previous versions is that you can now choose more than one field for actually uh, indicating what the exposure population field is. So the reason for that is that, in, for example, in this data set, we've been provided with male and female total population for each district, but no total population column. So just by selecting the two together, um, InnerSafe will then add them up to find out what the total population is for each area. So this what we're looking at on the screen now is the new field mapping tool and I'll just explain the basic concepts of it and there is also a fairly detailed explanation in the help documentation if you want to read more about it. But the idea is that we break down the population into different demographic groups and subgroups. So the groups that we provide out of the box with InnerSafe 4.1 are age, gender and vulnerability. 
And within age, we have that broken down again into infants, child, children, um, youth, which are basically teenagers, um, adults, and elderly. And then under gender, we've broken it down by females, um, uh, people of childbearing age, and, and women that are pregnant or lactating. Um, and then under vulnerability, we've got children under five, ch uh, adults over 60, and disabled people. So what we want to get at the end of this process is a report that actually gives us a breakdown by these different um, demographic concepts of the people that have been displaced in each area. Now, in order to do this, you basically need to go to each of these categories and decide whether you want to use it first of all. And if you do, then map the fields from your data set, which we looked at a little bit earlier in the screencast, into the concepts that are um, displayed in the wizard here. So I'm going to, for example, take um, females between zero and four and class them as infants. I'm just going to actually add them all in here like this. We're going to be doing all of them. And then I'm going to take females between uh, five to six, seven to nine and 10 to 12 and class them as children. And then females 13 uh, through to 19 and class them as youth. And your standards for what um, these classifications should be will vary nationally. So you should consult your national standards or whichever um, reporting standards you're using in order to decide whether a, a given group should go into adult or youth, for example. Okay, so I'm putting everybody from 20 to 59 in the adult um, group and then females over 60, 60 and over going to elderly. Then I'm going to do exactly the same process for males. Um, and then again, the same process for each of our different groupings. So that was the age grouping and now we'll do the gender grouping. So I'm just going to enable all of these. Again, you don't need to enable all of them if you don't want to report on uh, people of, uh, of childbearing age, for example. You could just leave it as do not use. Okay, and now I'm going to take a uh, female column here and just drop it in here. The ch uh, childbearing age, we're going to do from 13 to um, 55, something like that. And only the... Um, females in this case, um, and pregnant and lactating count. Um, in this case, we don't have it, that's fine. Then we can just keep on um, looking at the other demographics. So um, let's go over to the vulnerability group. So the vulnerability group, I'm going to use the same. Um, well, I'm just going to go back here and just say do not use for pregnant because we don't have the data to support it. So for vulnerability groups, I'm going to use the same classification for under 5 and then the other 60. We already have seen that as well before, so I'll take these two here. And the disabled, we've got a um, special column in the data set for disabled. Actually, we've got all of these different disabled categories. Um, and then um, also the vulnerable group would be males under 5 males over 60 and that's it so now we define the different fields that make up the different demographic subgroups and those in turn make up the different demographic groups and we can say next and complete the rest of the um, field definition process as per normal. All right, and now you can see in the summary of the metadata, you can actually see all those mappings we've done. So um, it shows that we've got females zero to four and males zero to four are in under five um, and so on. And everything has been broken down into their different groups. Now, I'm gonna say if we'll use this when we do the reporting in the analysis stage. Okay, so that's the basic process for defining um, the field mappings. As I mentioned, you can come back now that you've created these keywords, you can come back here to the tool which just focuses on that one, um, in on that one um, stage of the process of defining keywords. It 
focuses on the demographic groups. Um, and you can use this to come and refine. So for example, if you find you have got actually a column for pregnant, you could come here and change this to um, count fields and then select it. Now this tool can also be used in another way. Uh, for cases where you have only population totals um, in your area, you can use the uh, aggregation layer to define um, default ratios. So we're going to look at that process as well. So you can see I'm um, um, working with uh, Jakarta districts here. And you can see I've already gone and defined these ratios here. So I'll just go in and show you how that worked. Again, because I already have keywords, I can now just jump straight in using the, um, the field mapping tool. Now in the field mapping tool, you can see um, that I've defined ratios for um, age, but nothing has been defined for um, gender and vulnerability. Now, you'll notice that the aggregation um, um, process is slightly different to the, um, the exposure process. We have some extra fields here. We have global defaults and custom defaults, and all the terminology relates to ratios. Now, the reason for this is that normally we would not have population at the district area in an aggregation layer. We, if you did have um, population in an aggregation layer, normally you would make a copy of that layer and use it also as an uh, exposure layer. But in our case, we only know that um, for each district or um, uh, governmental area, um, there is a standard ratio of males to females, for example, or inf infants uh, to the rest of the population and so on. So when you're creating ratios, you're, you're aiming to create a value of one uh, for the total um, demographic group, and then all of the subgroups um, would be some fraction of one. Um, and InnerSafe provides a mechanism for setting global defaults for these things as well, which I'm going to go out quickly and show you how that works and then come back to the same form again so you can see where these global val uh, default values come from. So if you just say OK there, and then you go to uh, the InnerSafe menu and to Options. Then you can jump over to the Demographic Defaults tab, and you'll see here the defaults are defined for each of the demographic groups that we saw in the um, field mapping tool. Now in these defaults, you can come and say, for example, that um, you want the default um, infant ratio to be 0 0.01 and children 0 0.03, which is basically 1% and 3%. Um, just as you need to. Just bear in mind that these uh, ratios should ideally add up to one. So um, you can add them up and make sure that they are consistent. And you can define the default ratios also for the gender um, and vulnerability um, attributes. And there are also a couple of non-group related ones, particularly for males, um, uh, that you can set here. So when your ratios are set, and then you go back into the um, um, the field mapping tool um, and you're seeing these global defaults you'll see that they have now been updated to the ones that I just changed there. Alright so there are a couple of different use cases you might have. The one is that your aggregation layer you may have some fields which define these ratios. You'll notice that in this example I have no fields listed here. That is because I don't have any numeric um, columns in this aggregation layers um, attribute table. So I cannot use field mapping in this case. I can only do um, ratio, uh, default ratios. And those default ratios could come either from the global defaults, which we've seen just now in the InnerSafe options, or you can set them here um, um, just by typing them into these boxes. So I'll do a mix of um, different ones. And again, these should add up to one altogether. Okay. Um, and then likewise for um, gender, you can go through and set defaults here. So you'll notice that my, I don't have any global defaults set in my application. So I'm going to use um, uh, just a 0, 0,5 for females for childbearing age. I'm going to say um, 0, 0,25 and for um, lactating females I'm going to say also 0, um, 0, 0,05 something like that okay 
And then for vulnerability, I'm going to also specify the defaults that I want to use. So I'm going to say 0.1 or 1% 1 of, the, of the population is um, under 5 years old. Over 60, I'm going to say it is 30%. And I'm going to put the remainder in, uh, and for disabled, I'm going to say 0 0.1, uh, 0, 0, 001. So that's 1% of the population is disabled. All right. Again, you should use the national statistics for your country or your region to define these defaults, or if possible, you know, find some um, uh, official source for these numbers. Um, if you don't have an official source, you could use international standards. It's either way, you should do a little bit of research before you just fill these numbers in like I'm doing here. All right, so you'll see now that for our aggregation layer, we have some ratios set, and for our population layer, we have some counts set. It's important to make the distinction between the counts and the ratios. You cannot specify ratios at the population level. Right, you can only specify ratios at aggregation area level. Right, now that you've you've done this part of the process, you'd be ready to go ahead and do an analysis. So I'm going to do a sort of standard um, analysis with a flood, a raster flood, and uh, then we're going to run it. And then I'll come back. I'm going to pause the video while it runs because it might take a little bit of time. We'll come back and have a look at the outputs that have been produced. Just one note before I run it that I'm going to do a breakdown by Jakarta district. If you don't do choose an aggregation layer, then all the work that you've done in choosing the defaults will be lost. And the defaults will only be used, the, the ratios will only be used if you've selected the correct aggregation layer. All right, so I'm going to pause the video here and then we'll come back and see what happens after I've pressed run. Okay, so our analysis is completed and we can see the normal analysis results of InnoSafe over here. And then if you scroll down a bit, you'll see um, the, the demographic grouping reports. So you should be able to um, see that from the concepts that we defined earlier on in this screencast, um, we have now been able to produce reports. So for every one of the columns that you see here, they matched one of the terms that we were describing with our field mappings, so infants, child, youth, adult, elderly, and so on. And similarly for gender breakdown, and similarly for the vulnerability breakdown. So that's the real purpose of the, of the field mapping, is to be able to have enough information that we can produce these kind of reports. And they give you a much more granular representation of the population that was displaced by a, a disaster than previous versions of InnoSafe.